Today, there's 2.4 billion gamers in the world. Blockchain technology will unlock the opportunities for them to become creators, entrepreneurs, and service providers. Now, when one thinks about blockchain, one may think about Bitcoin, or perhaps these days Libra. But I'm here to talk today about how blockchain technology will unlock new economic opportunities for gamers all over the world to make a living doing what they love. Now, the peculiar thing about games is that as more and more people around the world are playing on PCs, consoles, and smartphones, more people are looking to break into the industry and make a living doing it. But that's driven down the odds of actually making it in the industry. In fact, sometimes it's as hard to make it in the industry in certain parts of it as it is to become an NBA player. And that statistic is what I want to talk to you today about. I believe blockchain technology will upend these odds and open up new opportunities for people all over the world. But before I get into that, let me share with you my journey through the games industry, as well as tell you about some of the things that are happening right now that may surprise you. Now, I've loved games ever since I can remember. This is one of my early favorites called Decathlon. I know it's not much to look at by modern day standards, but it captured my imagination with the multiplayer mode, uh, the mathematics behind the game, and the competition in a way that no film or book ever did. I played this game and others so much that my mom would tease me, Kevin, if you made a dollar every time you played a game, you'd be a rich man. I don't know about that, but maybe I wouldn't have had to raise money from our friends at Andrews and Horowitz. <laughs> In 2006, I did start a gaming company called Kabam. It was one of the first studios in the world to make games right inside of social networks like Facebook and MySpace. When smartphones came out, we were one of the early adopters making free-to-play games on smartphones that became known for our partnerships with Marvel and Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and Fast and Furious. We grew our player community to over 500 million players over 11 years. By the time I sold the company in 2017 to Netmarble, we were doing $400 million in revenue with over 1,000 employees across the world. After I sold Kabam, I started an esports team called Gen G. I'm really proud of bringing together a very diverse set of players from all over the world to compete at the highest level of gaming. I'm especially proud of our team on the top left, the industry's first all-female Fortnite team. And as of September of this year, the first female champion of a, fort, of a major Fortnite tournament. Now, that's my journey through the games. Let's talk a little bit about the market. At the turn of the century, the gaming market and the global music industry and the global film industry was about the same size. But over the last 19 years, the gaming market has absolutely exploded. In 2019, gaming will be a $150 billion market. It's larger than the film and music industry combined together, and it's been that way for the last eight years, and the gap is only growing. But beyond the dollars and cents, games are making a bigger cultural impact today. On the left, this is the New York City MoMA, a recognized leader in the, in the art world. They have a permanent collection now of 20 video games in the museum, and they've since announced that they're looking to double that collection. On the right, you see <clears throat> several movies that are made based on video game IP. Each of these films have done multiple nine figures in box office and have attracted A-list talent like Angelina Jolie, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Dwayne Johnson. And you know that games are becoming more and more mainstream when players flock to public places with their families to play games. This is Chicago's famous Cloudgate sculpture where 5,000 people descended to play a game of Pokemon Go. So we've seen revenues grow dramatically and the impact that games are having on our culture. <clears throat> but it's made me ask myself, especially with my history making games, for, and be, and making games and owning an esports team for the last 15 years, how can, how can making a living, doing what you love, become more accessible to more people? I believe blockchain ha is the key to this. But <clears throat> let's take a look at how people have made a living in the game industry in the past, what's happening today, and what's going to be possible in the future with blockchain technology. Traditionally in the game industry, making a living was about making the games themselves. Early on in the industry, games were oftentimes made by just a single person. 
This is Richard Garriott, and he's holding on the right side a copy of his first game called A Call of Beth. He made this game when he was just 17 years old, and he was the engineer, he was the game designer, and he was the artist. He sold the rights to this game for $150,000. Not bad for a 17-year-old. In the middle, you could see a news article that shows that he was while he was still going to college, he was employed by a game company, having a steady salary making computer games and making a salary of over $100,000 a year. But the scale of modern-day games is obviously a lot different. What you see here is the development team behind a game called World of Warcraft. The, <clears throat> the game has over 6,000 people listed in the credits in this latest expansion pack. And of course, the business has scaled appropriately. The, this game has made over $10 billion since it's launched over a decade ago. These days, though, artists and creators, they're starting to use games as a digital medium for creative expression and blurring the lines between the physical as well as the digital. This is famous EDM artist Marshmello. What you see here is earlier this year, he held a virtual concert in the game Fortnite. What's amazing is that 10.7 million people attended this concert live. The result for him was the single biggest week of album sales in his entire career and a 24,000% increase in his monetized music streams. Pretty incredible. Let's move on to esports. This is 16-year-old Kyle Gearsdorf. Earlier this year, he became the first ever world champion Fortnite player. He took home $3 million in this competition for three days in a tournament. That's 50% more than Tiger Woods won in the 2019 Masters. Four others also took home four-figure sums as well. There's salary opportunities in this industry as well. The average salary for a North American League of Legends player is $320,000 a year. Of course, what's making this possible is the viewership. 99 million people tuned in to watch the championship event. It was broadcast in 19 different languages across 30 different platforms, including ESPN. What you see here is the Staples Center, just a few blocks away from here, and the tickets, and they hosted the World, of, uh, the World Championship a, a couple years ago, and the tickets for the entire stadium sold out in less than one hour. Streaming is where gamers are playing a video game and broadcasting it over the internet for anybody to watch. Platforms like Twitch and YouTube have enabled this. Ninja is perhaps one of the most famous streamers in the world, and through his fan subscriptions alone, he makes $500,000 a month. This doesn't even include his endorsement deals like his Adidas partnership or his appearance fees, such as hosting the Red Bull's New Year's Eve party at Times Square. Now, to quickly recap, the way that people are making a living in the gaming industry is through, of course, making the games themselves, through becoming a professional world-class esports player, or entertaining audiences by streaming their gameplay. But even with these new opportunities, the opportunity to make it in the industry is still incredibly tough. So for example, in League of Legends, there's over 100 million active players in this game. Today in the entire world, there's just under 1,000 professional players. That's 0.001% of people are, that are able to make it to the pro leagues. On Twitch, the largest streaming platform, there's over 3 million active streamers a month. Out of that, there's only 10,000 that are in Twitch's partner program making a full-time income. Again, just a fraction of 1%. So even with these new opportunities, the opportunity to make a living doing what you love is still out of reach for many. Now, to kind of zoom out a little bit, gaming has always been at the bleeding edge of new technologies. Think about the PC, the internet, AI, cloud computing, and of course, smartphones and social networks. Now, blockchain technology, I believe, will open up the next major chapter in gaming. And it's not going to be a computing revolution, it will be an economic revolution. Blockchain technology perfectly aligns with the digital nature of games. So let's start with digital ownership. Blockchain, and Bitcoin in particular, invented a way for a person to truly own a nebulous digital asset. And they don't need to depend on a government or financial institution to say that they own that asset. The second is provenance, or a complete history of a digital asset from its origins. And the third is, of course, a safe way to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions, again, without depending on an intermediary. Now, if you're not deep into blockchain technology or a gaming geek like me, don't worry. I'll break down what these mean for gamers. So let's start with digital ownership. 
uh, in-game purchases of virtual items is a big, big business. The $150 billion I talked about earlier, 93 billion, or the large majority, is spent on in-game purchases of assets just like this one. And this is a Batman costume in the game Fortnite. For 20 bucks, you could get this limited time, um, limited time, limited edition Batman costume. But now let's imagine that a player who bought it no longer uses it and wants to sell it to another player that missed the event. But they can't, because they don't really own it. They own a license to a digital copy of this asset. But if this Batman costume was on a public blockchain, it would be the equivalent of going to a Halloween costume shop, buying a Batman costume, and you could keep it, you could gift it to your friend who missed the event, you could sell it, you could trade it for whatever you wanted. It's completely up to the player. So blockchain technology, when applied to gaming in the right way, will unlock real ownership for digital assets and create residual value for virtual items, as well as, in certain cases, turn digital purchases into investments. So to take things one step further, let's take a look at what digital history provides. This is, and let's take a look at a real world example. So this is Todd McFarlane. He is a famous comic book, comic book artist, and he's holding in his hand what many in, in baseball would consider to be um, the crown jewel of memorabilia. It is the exact baseball that Mark McGuire hit for his 70th home run, a monumental event in the sport. Now, this otherwise completely ordinary baseball was worth $2.6 million because of its verified provenance. Now, this, I know this might be a little bit hard to grasp, but for example, remember our friend Kyle Giersdorf. Imagine if somebody could own his exact, uh, Kyle Giersdorf is the first Fortnite world champion, and imagine if somebody could own his exact costume, his exact weapon, his exact gear that he used to win that tournament. I know this might be a little bit hard to grasp, but, this, but trust me, this stuff will be big. Finally, blockchain can capture value that's happening in peripheral markets. Players are buying and selling game accounts. Because remember, they can't actually own the items and, and trade those items, so they're, they're, they're buying and selling entire accounts. What you see here is what one gamer posted to Reddit. It's a Stripe dashboard. And so what this user does is he goes and plays a game called World of Warcraft. On average, he spends 10 minutes, or 10 days, I should say, creating a new account, leveling it up, and getting the right gear that he knows will be valuable, and then selling the entire account with the login credentials and password to another player. Over three years, he's made $471,000 doing this. Probably a lot more than he would have made if he drove an Uber or participated in another, in another part of the gig economy. This market is really big. Nobody knows exactly how big because it's in the periphery. But there's many companies that are set up to do this. One company has over 500,000 players that are ready to transact in pretty much any game you can imagine, and they've done over 30 million transactions to date. Now, the catch is, just like buying anything else on Craigslist, there's, no, there's plenty of scams and frauds, and there's no remediation if you get cheated out of your money. And most importantly, game creators like myself, we hate this. It creates a customer support nightmare. It creates all these security vulnerabilities in the game. And most importantly, we never see a single penny of these transactions. But blockchain technology, if it was applied inside of a game, would unlock, would solve all of these problems. Players would get a safe way to transact and buy and sell the things that they want. Service providers would have a built-in customer base. And then game developers can configure their smart contracts to take a cut of every transaction that happens. And most importantly, they could rely on modern-day cryptography technology, as well as the billions and billions of dollars that are invested in blockchain, tech, blockchain infrastructure today. Together, these aspects of digital ownership, provenance, as well as peer-to-peer -peer trading or internalizing peripheral markets will create a new form of community economics right inside of a game. So imagine that there's a version of an in-game eBay where you can buy and sell the virtual goods that you want. Imagine that there's something like an in-game Etsy, where creators and artists can create new skins and costumes and looks for other players. Imagine that there's something like a TaskRabbit, where you can go find another player and hire them to help you do that high-level dungeon or form a party in the game. This is the system that Forte is building. We're building all of the technology that game developers need to add blockchain technology to their, to their existing games with millions and millions of players, as well as create brand new experiences from the ground up. 
Today, there's 2.4 billion gamers in the world. Blockchain technology will unlock the opportunities for them to become creators, entrepreneurs, and service providers. And best of all, they don't need to be an experienced game maker. They don't need to be a world-class esports athlete. They don't need to be entertaining while they stream, and they def definitely don't need to be a celebrity. They just need to do what they love: be a gamer. I hope I've given you a glimmer into the future of what potentially is going to happen in gaming. And this is the global game community that I'm passionate about building to unlock the true economic and creative potential of games and to make a positive impact on the world. And it's one that Forte is bringing to reality. Thank you very much.